Tasty Bento here, and as you can see, I'm on B Skyblock, and I have some great stuff here. I have level 18 experience. It's gonna stock up, and I know that this server has an Acid Island server, so I'm just gonna take all this stuff to Acid Island. <laughs> uh, what happened? What happened, sheep? Well, my stuff disappeared. And my experience, too. What's going on? Let's go back. Oh, it's back. What is happening? Well, stay tuned to find out. So hi everyone, welcome back. And what I'm actually gonna be showing you is an add-on called Inventory Switcher or Invert Switcher. And that was what was enabling the magic that you saw before, where if you go from world to world, you're able to actually switch your inventory. And it also switches your health and your experience and your food level as well. So let's have a look how that was done. Now this was using a add-on API that's provided by Bento Box. And add ons are there to enable admins who are running Bento Boxes to really customize how they want their server to operate. And this is a very small add on, but it's a pretty interesting one that it gives us a very useful functionality. So we're going to take a little bit of a step through exactly how this was made. So first of all, the most important thing is that the inventory switch uh, extends the add-on class. And as you can see from the Java doc here, it's an add-on class for Bento Box. Uh, you extend it to create an add-on. And the operations and methods are very similar to Java plugin from Bucket. And we really modeled it after that so that it would be easy to understand. So just looking at that, there's two methods that you should override, on enable and on disable. So on enable uh, in this add-on does two things. It creates a store and it also registers a listener. So the listener, this is just a regular bucket listener that is going to be looking for player teleportation. So we can have a look at that one. That's an easy one to look at straight off. So this handles all teleportation events, for example, a player te teleporting into a world. And very, very simply, if you teleport into a world, so on world enter, then you get the inventory for that particular world. And if you exit, then it stores the inventory for that particular world. So let's have a look a little bit more about how these things are actually stored. And we do that in the store class. So the storing class is actually using two methods of storage. One is actually in the database. So we have a database that is created. And the second one is a cache so that we don't have to continually check the database. So to use a database in Bento Box is actually very easy. You define a database, you actually use database and you define it in terms of the storage object that you're going to use. So let's have a look at the storage object. In this case, it's called inventory storage. And I've put that in the data objects package here. So inventory storage should implement data object. A data object is an object, a class that you wish to store in the bento box database. Now this could be a YAML database, it could be a JSON database, it could be a MySQL database, a MongoDB, it could be any database. All of that is abstracted away from you. So you do not have to worry about how this is being stored, you just know that it can be. And so any plain old Java, Java class can implement a data object. So you have to implement these two mandatory methods. So technically, it's, it's not mandatory that you implement the field, but you must implement these methods. And in the case of where you are storing, in this case, we're going to be storing an object for every player. 
this is why we use a field unique ID here because when we set it we'll be setting it and when we get it we'll be using unique ID and for this particular one we'll be using the players UUID to retrieve and get the data and then we've defined a number of maps that are going to be storing the data we have the players inventory players health food experience location and for simplicity these are actually being stored the string here is the world name that is actually being stored and the rest of this class is just getters and setters that's it okay so if we go back to the store if we want to get a player's inventory then we get it for that particular world in that case we just uh, execute this particular method here get inf and if the cache contains the player's unique ID then we'll return the value there if it doesn't then we'll actually check into the database and we have this function here and in the database object called object exists so you can do a query to check if an object exists in the database using this and in this case I'm checking to see if the player's unique ID to string exists or not if it does then we can go and get it and we use the database load object method which will load the object based on the unique ID here now in theory if we've already checked that the object exists and we're loading the object then it should not be null however if some issue occurs during the database loading for example someone has edited a YML file in the database which they probably shouldn't be doing then it's possible that this could actually return a null in which case you should be checking if there is no null though if the store is valid then we can add the store which is now a fully padded out class so it's, it's that inventory storage class is now full of data we can then put it into the cache and we can return it if however all of this fails then we need to create a new storage perhaps this is a new player and we'll do that we'll create a new storage object we will set the unique ID to the players unique ID we'll put it in the cache and then we'll return that so essentially what bento box uh, enables you to do through the database is store and retrieve pojos plain old Java objects which you can define in your data objects classes here once you've retrieved the inventory we now do some processing on it and this is really not specific to bento box we only judge worlds in terms of their nether and end are the same as as the regular world we don't split between environments and then we apply the various settings to the health to the food situation to the experience and also to the last location that the player was in In terms of storing the, the player's inventory, it's really the reverse. So we try and get the store like we did at the beginning for this particular player. We determine the name of the world. We then start storing the various aspects of the player, their inventory, their health, their food, experience, and their location. And then we use this bento box method called save object, which takes the parameter of the inventory storage instance and that will just save it to the database after that we can clear the player's inventory we can set their experience to zero and we're done so the only other thing that you need to do from a add-on perspective is write this add-on.yml file the the key items follows very similar to bucket again you must have a name you must identify the main class, a version number, an author, and any dependencies. And this one has soft dependency on Acid Island and B Skyblock. So anyway, there we go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching that. That is a very simple and straightforward add-on. There's uh, not much to it, but uh, this is how easy it is to write add-ons for BentoBox. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.